Welcome to Strider Tree Gear. Today I'm changing gears a little bit. Back on the ground, I want to talk about sharpening your saws. Uh, this first video is going to be all about using the round file, a few different tips and tricks related to that. Sometimes you can't just swap a chain out, sometimes you want to save them, make them last, or you're way out and you, you've got some files in the truck, but that's it. And so it's just critical to know how to sharpen with files. And it can be fast and efficient and you don't lose much time. In fact, you can save a lot of time if you can keep that edge sharp. So stay tuned, that's what we're talking about. Here we go. Okay, so there's a lot of different types of files involved with sharpening. When it comes to just freshening up a blade uh, or a chain, like this one or like most of the smaller chains, uh, all you really need is a round file most of the time. Eventually, if you file enough times or you take a bad enough hit, then you're gonna need a raker file, which is, which is this one. It's flat, but the edge doesn't have any grooves, any texture to it. So the edge is smooth. Sometimes you get these and they're rounded. And that's kind of nice because when you're filing the rakers, you don't want to accidentally nick the tip of your tooth uh, with the edge of your file. So I, I'll show, I don't usually use this one. I usually use one of these square files for that. And there's ways to avoid nicking the tooth besides having that flat, but I'll show you that in another video. Um, so today I'm going to be mostly working with a round file. Now, files are like sharp knives, essentially. Um, if you have a bunch of sharp knives and you just bundle them up together and they sit there and bang around on each other all the time, they're going to get dull really fast and they're not going to be any good for anything. Files are the same way. This is an extremely hard metal uh, that makes up this file. And if I take the two of these files and bang them together, or they're sitting in the back of a truck or in a roll and they're all rattling together, they get ruined really, really fast. Like, just stupidly fast. So it's really important that if you get to, keep, to have efficient sharpening, you need good, sharp, fresh files. And if you don't wanna, if your files, you don't want them to be one-time use, then you gotta get something like this that keeps them all separate. So these are the files I use most of the time. Each one has its own little slot and it keeps them from banging on each other and they last much longer that way. So choosing the correct size file is, is critical. I'm gonna demonstrate why. If we look at this tooth right here, I've got three different size files. Now this one's too small and, and you can tell when I put the, the round part of the file here on the inside of the tooth, there's a lot of movement up and down, and the hook part is gonna come over, over the top of the file if I were to push it in and actually file it down. And that makes too thin of a profile up top, which one, gets dull really quickly, and two, creates a weak, a weak edge. I mean, that's, um, and then it's also gonna leave more gullet uh, than you want. So that's too small of a file. And then if we go the other way, and I've got too big of a file, You'll see when I put that in there, the, the cutting edge, this top edge right here, hits the file in a place where if I were to cut that, instead of sharpening this edge, I'm gonna blunt it. I'm gonna put almost a vertical, almost a vertical face on that. It's not gonna have a nice sharp taper at this angle. And you can kind of tell, you can tell you know, fairly well. Also, you can sort of see the gap right here between the inside of the gullet. And that means that the file is not getting all the way to the inside, uh, which just means it's just too big. It's too big of a file and you'll end up blunting it. So you can get away with a smaller file. So if I, if I only had this one file, I could make it work by lifting up on it a little bit and scraping out the underside of that top edge because that top edge is, is what, that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where the cutting happens. I can kind of get away with this if out in an emergency, but gen generally you want to have the file that fits your saws. And they're cheap enough. You can have a whole bunch of different sizes and they're a couple of bucks a piece, so it's no big deal. Um, so anyway, this is the happy medium file here. This is the correct size. When I put it in there, you can see the, the hook edge comes over the top, comes over not quite to the midline of the file, but it does, it's not, I'm not sharpening it into a vertical either. And then it fills in the whole gullet. So as I start to file this and I pull and I pull pressure towards me, it's going to sharpen the entire edge of that tooth all at the same time. Now I can tell both by the sound and by how slow this file is cutting, that this file is dull. It's not a very good one. So I'll probably swap that out here with a different one. 
Okay, so the first thing you need to consider here as you start filing is are your angles. So the, the difficult part about learning how to hand file well is getting your body used to holding very tight uh, precision angles. So the angle of the file relative the face of the bar uh, when you're round filing is just 90 degrees. So vertical here, horizontal here, 90 degrees and you're pushing the file straight across. And you need to be really level and consistent. The more wiggle there is on that plane, the more inconsistent your tooth, the top edge of your tooth is gonna be, and it's going to dramatically decrease the life of your, your edge, so your edge will go dull faster, and it's not gonna produce as sharp of an edge either. So it's really critical that you have a very even, consistent stroke that stays flat. Most guides that they give you put a little support here and here so that it's a little bit easier to keep that flat. And when you're using a guide is a good idea when you're first learning because you can get your body uh, used to that, maintaining that really consistent rhythm. But that's something that through thousands of sharpening, thousands and thousands of chains that I've sharpened, I've gotten consistent enough to where I, don't, I really don't need a guide and anyone can get that good. It's just a matter of repetition and practice. But you can see I keep it really steady as far as the, the angle, you know, and as steady as I can. And that makes a difference. The other angle you need to consider is the angle um, from the top down this direction. So this is the other angle that makes a big difference. If you're too blunt this direction, it's gonna cut more slowly. If you're too steep this direction, then you're gonna end up with a dull tip more quickly and it's gonna to have too much grab. Um, you want it somewhere in the middle. I believe the angle that they tell you is 30 degrees. Most files on the handle here have a little guide. So if I put the file up against there like that, it actually indicates roughly the angle I'm supposed to be using. And I tend to sharpen mine at a little bit of a steeper angle than, than the default. So I, I'll, I'll tend to bring mine a little bit more this way, as you can kind of see by this tooth. It's a little bit of a steeper angle. Most good chains have a little line right here that indicates the angle as well. So you, as long as you're keeping your edge parallel to this line, then you're doing a pretty good job and you're pretty close. You can be a little bit more off on this angle and it causes less of a difference than if you are off on this direction. Uh, the direction I showed you before. So this angle we're trying to maintain that, you know, roughly, roughly 30 degrees here, 30 degrees here, as you, as you push that through the stroke. Now, if there's a lot of wiggle in this, what happens is this edge stops being straight and it curves. You end up with a curved edge and it cuts poorly. It does not cut as well. You want a nice point here, a really straight line edge as your finished product. So once again, as little wiggle as possible to get that as close as possible. The way you tell whether something is sharp or dull is not by the finger test. You can't scrape your finger on there and really be able to see. What you're looking for is if you look at your edge with the light coming at it from this direction, if you can see a shiny reflective edge, then your, your saw is dull because it means that this edge is rounded off enough that light is reflecting off of it. A really sharp edge will have such a, such a, um, a small thin line of metal right there that you can't see it, it essentially disappears, the edge disappears. So once it's, once it's rounded off and shiny, then you know it needs to be sharpened. So this is a sharpened edge. Hopefully you can kind of see what that looks like. If you can't, uh, trust me, you can see it in real life. You, this edge just disappears. There's no shiny reflectiveness off the top edge. And so that edge is sharp. So the last thing we need to deal with once all the top, once all the teeth have been sharpened um, is the raker. So this, this part of, the, of this uh, link is called the raker. And this is what prevents the tooth from biting too deep. If this raker is too low, it's been filed down too far, then this will try to take too much wood out and it'll get it'll stop the blade. It'll just dig in and stop the blade cold and it makes it really difficult to impossible to cut if this breaker's too low. If it's too high, then no matter how sharp this is, 
it'll block the wood from coming in contact with the tooth and that'll make it cut really poorly. You'll have to put a lot of pressure uh, and it'll cut slowly and even if it is sharp. So the ratio, the height difference between this raker and this top of this tooth is critical to uh, a good sharpening. The way you get that right is with a raker gauge. Uh, it's a metal plate that lays over the top of the tooth, of this tooth and the raker, and it provides a stop for your raker file as the raker file goes over the top of the raker. And it makes it so that you can't file it down too far. So using a raker gauge is the correct way and probably the only way to get good consistent results um, to, to set your rakers. By as a general rule, I tend to put, you know, roughly two swipes, sometimes just one swipe, about every third sharpening of this tooth, which is a really, really rough way to do it. Um, and, I, and I have some, some sort of ways that I've figured out how to keep that balanced. Uh, but the appropriate way to do it is with a raker gauge. Let me see if I can find one to show you guys. Okay, so ideally you take your rakers down with a raker gauge, but I don't ever have one on me and I don't even keep one in the truck half the time. The, what I do is I use a roughly a three to one ratio of, of filing. I'll file these roughly three times to every one time I do the rakers, but I'll do the rakers. Uh, the, as soon as I pull the chain out of the box, I'll take two swipes off the rakers uh, because these can actually, they, they come out of the factory a little bit um, slow, a little slow cutting, and these new saws can cut fast if you take the rakers down a little bit, so that takes a little bit more meat off. It's called a hungry chain. If your chain's a little bit hungry, then it's trying to take too big of a bite because the rakers are too low. But I'll show you how I do that. Basically what I do is I take my finger and I cover the tip of the, uh, the, the, tip of the uh, tooth that I don't want to hit with the raker file, and then I take my raker, and I don't file quite flat. I'll roll it over a little bit and put a little bit of an angle on it. There's actually a line on the raker that indicates roughly the angle you want. But I'll go like this and I'll put one, two stripes off of that and it rounds it over a little bit and that's okay. You don't have to worry, like this, the, the geometry of this doesn't matter very much. Man, that was loud. The geometry of this doesn't matter that much. Uh, if it's rounded, it's okay. If it's a little bit weird and wonky, it's okay. As long as the top of it uh, isn't too low relative to this tooth. I think I could actually take a little bit more off of this one right now and to get it a little bit lower relative to the tooth. So I'm gonna take another swipe off that. All right, and here's the big secret, right? If you've got a chain that is really rattly or really inconsistent or cuts far too much on one side than the other, if your teeth are fairly consistently sharp, because if they're not consistently sharp, then it'll do that no matter what. <clears throat> but if your teeth are all sharp, you just sharpen all of them, but it's still doing that, what you need to do is you need to go back and look at all of your rakers and see which ones are really shiny. So this one that I just filed is gonna have lines, cross hatching file lines across this way. Um, but one that is really shiny is one that is rubbing in the wood and all the, the cross hatching is going to be worn off because it's making a lot of contact with the wood. If you go back and just take one swipe off the shiny ones, just the shiny rakers, then you'll find that you can actually balance out an uneven saw by slowly filing down the rakers that are too high. And then pretty soon they'll all be equally shiny because they're all making roughly equal contact in the wood. Um, as you get to look at these a lot, you'll actually be able to eyeball when, which ones are not high enough and which ones are close. But it's a matter of like thousandths of an inch. It, it's very close proximity. Uh, most of these are actually are, are too high. This one's really too high. That one's about good now. That's the one I did. This one's a little bit too high. That one's pretty close. It could take a little bit off. But you'll start to see it after a while. So do you need a raker gauge? No. Um, should you use it? Yeah, probably until you get the hang of exactly what it needs to be.
So I should note that having the chain a little bit tighter than you normally would when you're running the saw is helpful for sharpening. You get less chatter. So it makes things a little bit smoother for sharpening if you have the chain tension higher than normal. You just gotta remember to turn it back down because too high of a chain tension will wear out your bearings, your crank bearings prematurely. Don't take lots of swipes off the rakers. Never do more than one or two at a time without testing it because too much material off the raker will ruin a chain until you sharpen the heck out of the teeth again. So I almost never do more than two swipes on the rakers at any time. So some people who are severely right-handed will try to do both sides with the right hand. So like, if I'm over here and I'm pushing this way, I can kind of do it like that. And if you've got a vise, that works fine. If you're holding it in the vise, you can go right-handed here, and then you can switch sides and I can go right-handed over here um, and make the filing and do the filing efficiently. And that's fine. But when you're on the ground, and I'll show you this in a minute, um, it's hard to hold things steady out in the field. You know, a lot of times I don't have a vise. So I just learned to do it with my left hand because my right arm my, or my legs, I can actually hold the saw steady. And I can do the, the, all the right hand teeth with my left hand, pushing it across. And then I can do the left hand teeth with my right hand, going the other direction. In the field, this is how I do it. Put it on, saw on the ground. I'll actually put my, my foot like the crook of my ankle over the handle and I squeeze this, the, the saw in between my legs and then I file from right over the top. Not perfect, but not bad. Let's try some oak. All right, thank you for joining me on Strider Tree Gear today. Hope you found that useful, all you folks who are round filing your saws. And if you got any more questions, comments, your own little techniques that you like to use, I'd love to hear it. Shoot them down in the comments. And if there's any other little skills that you'd like to know more about, let me know as well. I'd be happy to make a video on it. Catch you next time here at Strider Tree Gear.